Hello everyone, my name is Karim Abbaspur. I'm the developer of SWAT Cup programs. This is video number three of our SWAT Cup series of lectures. In this video, I will describe the program Particle Swarm Optimization or PSO for short. It is important that you understand the concepts of the SWAT Cup program so that you can better apply them to your calibration study. Now, before um, I go into PSO, I would like to uh, explain the Latin hypercube uh, sampling because uh, based on the previous video, some people were asking me how this, this goes, so I will briefly uh, explain how this goes. Um, let's assume that you have uh, three parameters with the given parameter ranges here, and let's further assume that you would like to make three um, simulations. So what you do is you divide your parameter ranges into three equal segments. One, two, three, one, two, three, and um, one, two, three. And now um, this Latin hypercube is actually a, a stratified sampling. And the advantage of it over um, Monte Carlo is that it can now uh, um, make sure that the whole space of your parameter is sampled as opposed to a purely random sampling that the, all the samples you take could be clustered in one area of the of the parameter and here we would like to make sure that the entire space of the parameter is sampled and for this reason latin hypercube becomes uh, much more efficient than uh, a random sampling now after the, you have divided it into these segments, or the number of simulations that you would like to make, you can take a random sample from each segment to represent that segment. In my case, I take uh, the middle of each segment to represent that segment. And uh, you can uh, see that if you divide this into, for example, 500 simulations, as we usually make about three to 500 simulations, then the segments become extremely small for each parameter range and uh, uh, it doesn't matter if you take uh, a random sample or you sample from the middle of that segment. The reason I take the middle of the segment is that uh, so you can repeat a simulation over and get the same, same results. You do the same thing for the second and the third parameter and then in the next step what you do is you randomize these segments for each parameter as shown here and then after that simply these uh, three parameter values here make your parameter set number one uh, this makes your parameter set number two and these values make your parameter set number three as uh, simple as that now, <clears throat> if you have a comment on, on the video um, that, uh, that I make that you don't follow or you would like more explanation, you could either make a comment on the video on the uh, YouTube or you can write to SWATCOP Google Group or you can write to vtechdata at gmail.com and I will try to cover that in the next uh, video. Now let's go to Particle Swarm Optimization, or PSO, and uh, let's talk about the concept of this PSO a little bit. PSO is a robust stochastic optimization technique based on the movement and intelligence of swarms, like birds, bees, fish, and etc. PSO applies the concept of social integration to problem solving. It was developed in 1995 by James Kennedy, who was a social psychologist, and Russell Eberhardt, who is an electrical engineer. And in recent years, if you look at the published papers, there are a lot of uses of PSO in electrical engineering. PSO um, uses several agents or particles or birds or bees or whatever you want to call it, these agents constitute the swarm that move around in search in a search space looking for the best solution. 
Now you can think of this as a flock of birds that are put in a room with a small opening in the room and the birds are trying to find that opening to get out of the room. Now each bird or each particle is treated as a point in an n-dimensional space that adjusts its flying according to its own flying experience as well as the flying experience of the other particles. So it can benefit from a local as well as a global search. Each particle keeps track of its own coordinates in the solution space, um, which are associated with the best solution that has achieved so far by that particle. This is value is called the p-best or a personal best. Another best value that is tracked by the PSO is the best value obtained so far by all other particles. This value is called global best or g-best. Now, in a population-based search procedure, particles change their position or their state based on a distance and a velocity. Velocity, you can think of it as the step size. So if the velocity is large, your, the particle takes a larger step size in the uh, parameter space. Now, particle i has position si in that space and changes with velocity vi in the parameter space. The basic concept of PSO lies in accelerating each particle towards its own p-best as well as the global best locations with a random weight that accelerates its movement at each time space as shown in the figure here. Now in this figure this is the current position of the particle and this is the velocity of the particle and now we would like to calculate the next position and the next velocity. This is the p-best, that's the best value that this, you can think of that as an objective function, that's the best value of the objective function that the particle has achieved. And this is the best value of the whole population, the g-best. Now using these two, we can calculate the next uh, position of the particle or the next uh, as well as the next velocity of the particle. Now you can see this formula. It has a component here which has to do with the personal best of a particle and this component here has to do with the global best of all particles. And this is the current velocity of a particle which is multiplied by a weight. This weight which is multiplied by the velocity, it's probably the most important thing in uh, PSO and this velocity is the most important, is the only actually parameter that really changes in, in PSO. Next to the these, these two C1 and C2 parameters and also a random function. So using this formula we can calculate the next uh, move of a particle. Now, I want to make a suggestion here. It's a PSO-SPE combined calibration. What I mean by that is that um, I recommend, recommend that you really try uh, using this. One, you run PSO and find an optimum solution. That's the first step. And you will get, at the end, single value parameters with the best objective function value that PSO could find. Next, you build an uncertainty interval around those parameter values and then you run the SPE program with those parameter ranges. Uh, I'm sure you will not be disappointed. And uh, let me bring your attention to the fine print here that says this will deepen your calibration analysis and increase your chances of getting your paper accepted. Now, let me um, continue with the algorithm or the flowchart of how PSO actually operates. So you start 
by choosing your number of particles. You start by choosing the number of iterations you want to make. So each iteration, in each iteration, you have a certain number of particles or simulations that you make. And then you use the best uh, parameters that are found in that, uh, 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 in the first iteration. And you start your next iteration with the, what you found best in the previous iteration. Then you initially populate the parameter hyperspace with some random values or whatever values that you have in mind. Then you evaluate the fitness of each particle. You calculate the objective function. And then you modify velocity and state based on the p-based and g-based using the equation that I showed you. And then you examine whether your rule, so you need to have a stopping rule, a certain value of the objective function that when it's reached, then the program should stop. If you have reached it, then uh, you will stop the processing for, uh, you will stop the PSO and you start processing for uncertainty analysis. If you haven't reached it, you go back to populating your parameter space again with the, in the next iteration, and then you follow the loop here. Now at this stage, when you calculate your objective function, you um, test whether the behavioral condition that you have set on the objective function is met or not. If that condition is met, then that parameter set is collected and that constitutes your best or your behavioral solutions. And at the end, you start the post-processing. And then, which is you calculate the goal values and you calculate the 95 PPU. So this would be the uncertainty part that I added to it. And, and, and that's the PSO, which is actually an optimization and finds you uh, the best uh, optimum values. Um, in the next video, I will build a SWOT Cup project using an example SWOT model. And then we will get, see how to get the, that all important initial simulation. And then based on that initial simulation, we decide how to go on with our calibration, what parameter to use, what ranges to use, and so on. So you don't have to get a bunch of random parameters in your parim file and then just simulate anything and hope for the best. No, your approach has to be based on the behavior of your model. And then on that basis, you choose your parameters and, and so on. I have here some links or to references uh, which for videos one to three, um, if you want to do more reading, you can, you can look at some of these articles. Thank you very much for watching.